Hey guys, this is GimmaCow. Welcome to another Pokemon Traded Card Game History Discussion video. This time, it's not a new set, it's new rotation. But realistically, it's not much of a rotation here. Uh, the 2013 format was a very confusing one to work out the rotation for. On principle, it's straightforward. We're moving to Next Destinies on, and black and white promos 33 and higher are legal, so the 32 that we have here are rotating. But the problem is, there are like a bazillion reprints during this time, either already in the format or ones which are coming up, and it's a nightmare trying to work out what is and isn't actually legal here. I've doing this as a take too because I actually got like two or three things wrong in here beforehand and if, well if I have anything else wrong please let me know in the comments because I'd love to know even if it's just for the accuracy of making sure we get our decks right for, for this format it's it's very confusing this is one of the reasons why in gen 7 they moved to the alternate art uh, thing like Mnemonica for Pokemon especially where it's like Pokemon with a, a new artwork printing do not affect the legality of it in terms of when it came out and nowadays we have the uh, the block notation right so we've got the D block the E block etc and you know they can just say okay every card from this letter on is legal and that makes it so much easier but here, it's it's confusing as all get out. That said, there's only three sets which are rotating anyway. Next Destinies was the EX set, so I can kind of understand why they would cap it there. It's when EXs were introduced, and this is the, the first of the full light block for that. But it does mean there's not a ton to go over, I suppose. So we have the black and white base set over here. Honestly, very few of these cards have actually still been seeing play, and most of the time it's in jank stuff anyway. And most of the ones which are good for jank stuff are reprinted, so yay. Um, we do have some trainer cards in here that are kind of important though, so we'll get into those. Emerging Powers was never a good set when it even came out in the first place. Even on release, there were like maybe two Pokemon that were actually good, and it was basically Thunderous and Tornadus, right? Uh, Gothitelle was fine, but not amazing when it first came out. Uh, was okay with God of War, though. But that didn't come out until Next Destiny, so whatever. The two trainers in here are relevant, so like Max Potion and Catcher, both of which either or you know, both of which have reprints already, right? Dark Explorer says Pokemon Catcher, and Max Potion got a shiny print. I think that was in Plasma Storm, actually, but it was either Storm or Freeze, and yeah, it's in format still, so no, basically nobody cares. Just because it's the like, you don't have to have the shiny one in order to play this. It's the same as all sort of legality stuff that way. And then Noble Victories actually did have a lot of really good cards, but most of them aren't relevant anymore. So, yeah, there's a couple in here which are worth noting, as we'll get to. But it's kind of awkward. And then basically every promo, with two exceptions of Evolving Basics, get, uh, get reprinted. So, yeah. I have split this into three categories here. We have the cards which are staying for because they already have reprints, and we'll show which print that is as well. We have the cards which are coming up in Legendary Treasures. This is one set away, we're doing Plasma Blast and then LTR. And these cards, LTR is basically your like Call of Legends sort of thing. It's a big you know, reprint of the good stuff in this generation. And while well, a couple of things don't get reprinted unfortunately, but all of this does. So we'll go into those. And then the cards of relevance which are actually gone. And I say relevance in kind of big quotes here. Two cards are relevant out of this and then the rest of them are contextual or historical. So yeah. The trainer cards, there's maybe a couple more which are actually useful. So. In terms of the Pokemon we have here, we have Superior, which was reprinted in Dragon's Exalted. We have Emball, which was printed in Next Destinies. Zorark, which was Next Destinies as well. Reuniclus was printed in Dragon's Exalted. Chandelure, I think, was, yeah, also Next Destinies. Terrakion was in Boundaries Crossed. Verizion's actually coming out in Plasma Blast, but that's the very next set, so that's legal for that reason. Uh, Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus all got promo printings uh, beyond number 32, so they are all in the format here. Reshiram and Zekrom got printings in Next Destinies, and also will get printed in 
uh, LTR as well. And Kieran got printed as a promo number 44. All of these actually get reprinted in Next Destinies, I think, except Chandelure, but because it's in... Uh, uh, Legendary Treasures, sorry. Because it's in Next Destinies anyway, then this still stays legal. Although, not really sure why you would play it now, but whatever, it's there. For stuff that is out for one set, uh, Victini, the, the Flip Teeny, is not legal for next set. Round as a deck is kind of hurt because X Wild is terrible, let's be honest. But um, Palpatoad and Sizepatoad do come back, and they get a partner in Meloetta that we'll talk about when the set actually comes out. So that'll be fine. Gothitel lease for a set. I don't think anyone's going to be too upset. We're not exactly going to show Gothitel at Selgor again here because let's be honest, it's basically the same deck as what we saw. The Solosis and Duosian, there are uh, copies of these in Plasma Blast, but they're different cards, obviously. And to my, you know, for my money, these are still the best ones that you could play because they actually have an attack in Desperation that you could do for like one energy, right? Whereas the other ones are all like a psychic energy to do a thing and they don't get any more HP, still 30 and 60, so I think these are the best ones overall. The Bouffalant from Black and White base set gets reprinted. I love this artwork so much as well. Just, just so cute with the little Natus on there. Uh, if you actually see the Natu card in LTR, we'll point that out when we get there, because that video is going to be an artwork appreciation one. Um, when you see the Natu card, the story of it is that they're huddling together for warmth in the blizzard, and there's a Bouffalant in the background that's coming towards them, and it's this Bouffalant over here. They get to they get to ride in the hair and stay warm, and it's so cute. Uh, Cobalion didn't get a promo print for some reason, but it does come back in LTR, so sure. Cobalion is the Suicune of the Musketeers, I guess, because Suicune didn't get any X for some reason. The other two did. And then Trainers. Uh, Crushing Hammer unfortunately comes back in LTR. I really wish this just stayed gone, but whatever. I can kind of understand why some people would want it in format, I guess, or why it might be a necessary evil. I hate the coin flip nature of it, though, I'll be honest with you. And then Energy Switch surprised me. I actually thought this got printed in like Dark Explorers or something uh, as a reprint, but no. I was looking at the the search tile is fantastic for stuff like this. If you played the mod here, by the way, um, I was looking for Energy Switch on the tile. And it's like yeah, Black and White Base was its only printing before LTR, so it's out for the next set. Kind of annoying actually, because it would be really useful for a couple of decks in the next, uh, in you know, this exact set coming up. Especially Tool, uh, Tool Drop could potentially use it, but like even Vrizzy and Genesect would like this around. So a little bit of a, a shame. Makes Darkrai slightly weaker in the next set, I guess, so there is that. But yeah, that's the main stuff that we're getting back. What are we actually losing here? Well, Victini was historically good for Raetiel's decks in the first place, but it was also just going to be poised to be fantastic here, like in the next set. 70 HP, eh, it's, you know, it's fine, it's lovable, searchable. For a single prize, it's not the worst in the world. And then v Create does 100 for a Fire Colorless, but only if you max out your bench, which is a li liability and a limitation. It's a liability when Chorus is played quite a bit, because the opponent can take advantage of your full bench and just draw lots of cards. But, well, one, you can take advantage of your full bench and draw lots of cards too. But also, the best deck in the next format is Grass type, which is not something you get to say very often. But obviously, they're weak to fire, and this would one shot them as a one prizer. So, yeah, actually, a legit loss. This could have been very good for the next, uh, the next round, but we don't have it, so oh well. The Snivy is one of the two promos I'll mention here. This is just the best evolving Snivy. Like, it's not exactly great, but, you know, Bubble on Froki in the future actually has come up and won tournament games. And, yeah, just paralysis on a coin flip sometimes is enough to sway games. So, yeah, we'll note it anyway. The Stoutland from Boundaries Crossed is still legal and blo you know, blocking the opponent's supporters whilst it's in the active slot. 
and if you wanted to play it, the best Lillipop to play, I think this one was played in Expanded actually, that should show how decent this is. Uh, yeah, pick up, get an item card from the discard pile, we've seen what Junk Hunt can do, this just does half a Junk Hunt, but it's for any energy, so that's kind of neat. And if you use Celebi, then you could use this on Stoutland with Celebi X on the bench, and that would let you copy this attack. So yeah, genuine loss on this one. The Herdia in the same sets, black and white base. This is just the best of the bad bunch, to be honest. Uh, draw three for a double colorless is not great, but every other Herdia that's in format right now is 80 HP as well and worse attacks than this. So yeah, I'm noting it anyway. That's how starved we are for like notables here, I guess. Whirlipede we're mentioning because of the deck that Psy played. It wasn't the best deck out there, but it certainly was fun, and fun to go against as well. Uh, Venishock doing 70 if the opponent is poisoned, with Hypnotoxic Laser being available, that's obviously very good. So yeah, definitely not a bad option. Again, the Celebi lets you use it with the Scarlipede, so you've got Poison Point that can trigger it as well. It was pretty nice. Definitely a fun deck to go against, but this was Emerging Powers, so I guess this was the true best card of that, uh, that set, right? This Trubbish is not played very often because 60 HP is just a little bit too vulnerable to like Laser, Fospear, that sort of thing, but it did have a really good attack in Garbage Collection, and it only had one retreat, so you could, with Sky Arrow Bridge in older versions of the deck, uh, you, you know, like Tornadus, uh, Mewtwo, Garbodor, in old versions of that you could play this as a Sky Arrow retreat target, so yeah. Especially the Tornadus builds were very good into that. Tornadus Garbodor was very nice, so yeah. Noting it because of the retreat cost more than anything. Sinchino was a historic card when Black and White Base first came out, like Donphan was a really big annoyance for it, but Sinchino Kingdra was actually kind of fun, so noting it more for the historic sense of it, do the way of doing 20 for every bench Pokemon that you have, it was it was good. 100 for a DCE on a 90, you know, like a decent stage 1 Pokemon, it didn't take a lot to get out. Uh, we're actually getting this effectively reprinted but better in Raichu from X and Y, which we'll, again we'll get to as we we, uh, as we get there, but it has the same attack, just named differently, and actually hits weakness, which is much better for it. Vanillox is one we never actually showed, because I think nobody just wanted to play it, because it was very lame to think about. Um, the When Valplume was in play as well, so you could block item cards to prevent Switch from being used, Double Freeze was just a nearly guaranteed 15 out of 16 chance to auto-paralyze the opponent and do a reasonable amount of damage as well, like 40 plus auto-paralysis every turn. It's pretty good. Sometimes you get 80. On um, rare occasions, you would get nothing and you would be very sad. But yeah, when you could copy this sort of attack with Mew Prime, that was pretty good. Like Mew EX would do the same thing, but then they'd just play Switch and it'd be pretty silly. So yeah, uh, fun card, not necessarily one that we wanted to play though. Okay, on to stuff that actually matters. Kling Klang is a bit of a heavy loss. We're getting Rainbow Energy back in XY base, so we would have had the whole like metal transfer stuff around. And the thing with this is that the Kling Klang from Plasma Storm really likes having one copy of this around. You can still play the Kling Klang deck, you just don't have the versatility like you used to. Maybe. Maybe you have to play Scramble Switch now, that would be something, right? Yeah, being able to move your energy around so you can max potion guys at will is a fantastic option to have around, and we just don't have that anymore. So, yeah, bit of a loss to be honest. Uh, the Clink Line deck was fun to play in Dark Explorers, and we could have we could have continued seeing it, but just more stuff that we wanted to show, I suppose. So yeah. Electric is going, and this is a huge loss to be honest, because this means obviously Ray Eels dies. It means there was a Zekrom Electric deck that we could have played in the previous round as well, since there's not so much finding stuff going around, and uh, that would have been pretty fun. But yeah, I overplayed this, I know I did, but it also there just wasn't a lot of different stuff to play in the sort of time frame that I was playing this in, so yeah, sorry that I did too many of them, I suppose, but. The decks were all interesting at the very least, and it just generic acceleration from the discard on a level ball searchable guy, it's always going to be good, right? So 
yeah, at least playable, and that's where we were at. So I enjoyed it a lot. Landorus obviously really hurt this thing when that came out, so we didn't see it very often going forward. But losing any energy acceleration of this caliber is still going to hurt the format a bit, so yeah. The Litwick, uh, Pepper probably wants me to mention this one because it's Call for Family. I honestly don't like this one very much because it's only got 50 HP, but I guess the difference between 50 and 60 isn't that huge now. But it just means that like a Plasma Kyurem with needs one less damage mod to kill you, which is, yeah, I'd rather just play a 60 HP one. But hey, Call for Family is a good attack, so if you go first, that's fine. And then Durant actually goes as well. This thankfully did not get reprinted in uh, Legendary Treasures because it doesn't deserve it. Uh, Durant is not great at this point in time because it is rather easy to just overpower it, especially with laser and stuff being around as well. You really can't get away with just playing Durant at this stage. But when it came out, it was the city's menace and it was honestly kind of hard to stop when you had all the revives and stuff like that going around. So, yeah, I did respect. It was a mill deck that actually worked. As far as the trainers go, Plus Power disappears for good. This is the last time it ever gets printed, is black and white base. And uh, yeah, doing 10 extra damage. We didn't play this too often in the end, uh, partly because deck space, mostly because laser kind of eclipses it in the end but it was really good for the Lugia deck. The Turbo Lugia was the main one I played it in, in the end. And yeah, just being able to hit 180 with a Lugia without having any prior damage, that's kind of great. So yeah, it's going to be missed a little bit. There's an Aerodactyl that's still in format if you want to do Twist Mountain, Bad Debt Mondo shenanigans that you, can, uh, you could use instead, but yeah. Pokedex goes away until XY Evolutions, I think, at the very end of the next generation. Uh, this is mostly a blow to Quadza. Kinda can't play that deck anymore. Can't really play Ether as a concept, really. There's not exactly any good ways of using it. There's a Lunatone that lets you look at the top two cards of your deck and rearrange them. Top two is just not good enough to consistently find an energy. So I think Ether as a concept is also probably out at this point. But yeah, it's a shame. This kind of effect is neat. We actually see this sort of thing just slightly improved in uh, Mew VMAX decks and stuff, right, with uh, Rotom Phone. So yeah, this kind of effect does actually see play from time to time. Pokemon Communication, I think this goes until, is it Gen 7 when this comes back? I think it is Gen 7, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, the whole like Pokemon Trader aspect thing goes away. We have plenty of other search at this point. We've got our Ultra Ball, we've got Level Ball, we've got Heavy Ball. So there's plenty of ways of searching out our stuff. If we want to uh, play like Computer Search, obviously, is another thing we could search a Pokemon with. And yeah, that's more than enough to get what we need out here. Team Plasma Ball, if you're playing the Plasma Dex, is fantastic too. So it's not like we need it, but it's always just like getting any Pokemon out of the deck is, is a good tool. And when it got played, it got played very nicely. But hey, Ultra Ball kind of eclipses it, so yeah. Recycle is a bad card for bad people, but it's rotating, so I'm mentioning it here. Just if you flip heads, get a card from your discard pile on top of the deck. I mean, I guess that could have been a way you could use Aoife, right? Get the basic energy back, but it's so bad, don't ever play it. Revive is kind of a shame to lose, getting any Pokemon from your discard pile, any basic Pokemon from your discard pile I should say, onto the bench is neat. Um, it's kind of like Bad Pokemon Rescue is what Pepper like pilled me on it, and I guess that makes sense, but it's still pretty solid when you're getting like a good basic back onto the bench, you know, good two prizer, or even just getting your uh, evolving basic back. It's good. Durant Dex loved it. So yeah, I guess it's that. This one surprised me a little bit. Super Scoop Up is gone for the entire 2014 rotation. It doesn't get reprinted until Furious Fists, which is the first set of 2015. And I didn't expect that, to be honest. We do get an A-Spec in the next set, of, uh, if you want to use your one of A-Spec on Scoop Up Cyclone, which is a guaranteed uh, pick up the card. So like maybe that could be fine, 
But yeah, it's very interesting to think that we just have a format that doesn't have this kind of effect in it. Like even now in current day with Scar the Scarlet Violet set, we have Penny, which is still usable in some decks, and like Charon's Care, right? We have a couple of decks that have this kind of effect in them, even though we just lost Scoop Up Cyclone, so it's it's curious. Not really sure what to make of that. We are going to get some supporter cards that do this, but I don't remember if we get them. I think we don't get them until 2015 anyway, with like AZ, so yeah, I don't know, it's weird. And then Cross Transceiver, nobody actually played this card, but I mean, this came out before Random Receiver, which obviously Random Receiver just eclipses this, but if you flip heads, you can search it out for any supporter card and put it into hand. Let you in on a little secret, there's a card called Jirachi EX that's coming out in the next set, which is a level ball searchable uh, card that searches your deck for a supporter card, so you just play that instead. It is a two prize liability though, so there are times where that's going to be a problem. But yeah, that is, that is it for the rotation. It really is a small one. I honestly probably went on longer than I should have with the stuff here, but... Yeah, I don't know, there's, there's just not a lot which actually goes away. And of the relevant cards, it's like Plus Power, Pcom, Super Scoop potentially, Eel, Clang Clang. And then these two go away for like one set. And that's pretty much it. There's, there's very little else, you could debate the Victini I guess, but there's very little else that's actually relevant here. So most of what you've been seeing in terms of good decks are going to stay good decks. But that doesn't mean that the format's going to be stale for the next uh, era, because oh dear lord no, XY changes a ton of things, and even in the very next set, like the new top deck of the format is completely different from what we've seen so far. So it's going to be a good one regardless. So hopefully you join in for that. And uh, until then, thank you for watching and take care.